Hey everyone, welcome back. It's great to see you. Today, we're going to talk about The Walking Dead, the Telltale Definitive series. Um, this was published by Skybound. And you're saying, okay, Skybound Games, what is that? Well, the final few episodes of the final season of this game happened at the time that Telltale had filed for bankruptcy. And so this um, spinoff subsidiary Skybound Games went on to complete it, and then ultimately they launched this definitive uh, series. What's really cool about this series is that it has all episodes, one, two, three, four, DLCs, like 400 days, and then also the Michonne spinoff series as well. And so I was really excited when I got my hands on this because I like Telltale games a lot. I had played the first two seasons around the time that they released, um, and I've played through the Batman games and um, what else? Tales from the Borderlands. So I'm, I'm not I'm not a, a stranger to this style of genre and the style of adventure game. And so when I heard that we were going to get everything, and not only that, but they're going to include some things like upscaled textures and gameplay uh, improvements, including. Um, you know, they have this really cool graphic black visual art style that they um, did for the first couple seasons um, as a filter option. I believe you had to purchase it. But nonetheless, very cool, um, added a nice style to the game. And so, yeah, um, picked this up, played through all the se episodes finally, and got a full scope of the story, and so wanted to talk about it. And so that's about it. Um, as you can see, with most games of this generation. Not a whole lot happening in the box space, but I do quite like the box art. You know, you get the zombie on the front, and then you have um, Clementine, you know, different different stages of Clementine's life represented in the cover art. Um, there's also some cool things I wanted to share about um, kind of the background of this game. You know, Telltale had um, already had a bit of experience making adventure style games in this format. They had worked on a couple Sam and Max games, I believe, that were in this style, and they also had a really cool uh, Back to the Future game, um, also in this style, more adventure, so on. And um, actually, that game's kind of expensive still nowadays to get your hands on. Um, but they had had interest in doing this in kind of the zombie world and making a game really delivering on story and narrative, inspired um, the team, the team was inspired by um, titles such as Heavy Rain and the Uncharted series where the focus really was the story and the cinematics and making, making the world feel um, very engaging for the player. And so actually they had approached Valve and they asked Valve, hey, um, Left 4 Dead, we want to do a spin-off Left 4 Dead game um, where you're, they're in the Left 4 Dead world and there's this story so on. And I guess they failed to kind of get through those negotiations because ultimately they ended up announcing, along with Warner Bros, that they were going to do this episodic release for uh, The Walking Dead. And so when the first game came out, there was, um, I think, a lot of hype and, and a lot of enjoyment for the game. It tells a pretty fantastic uh, story. And um, I think this was probably an entry point for a lot of people into Telltale Games and the Telltale series. And I had played it around that time too, and I really enjoyed it. And so coming back to it, um, just wanted to share my overall thoughts and opinions. So in the realm of the narrative, episode one, really good. And it still holds up quite well. The dynamic and relationship between Lee and Clementine is fantastic. It really builds over the, the episodes. And you really do get a nice drama and tension along the way between their relationship and how it'll be tested and so on. Um, and of course, there's an overarching narrative of the group that you're with kind of trying to get out of the situation they find themselves in and, and go somewhere safer. But either or, there's great characters, there's great dialogue and interaction between those characters. Um, you know, one, one thing that these games really focus on is their freedom of choice. And so I thought the freedom of choice here was super effective. Um, when you make decisions, you really feel like there's some agencies to the decisions you made and that they will in fact affect the outcome um, of the game. And I think you do see that when you get towards the end. There's um, nice summaries at the end of each chapter 
that explain the choices you made and the choices other players made. But when you get towards the final parts of the game, there's this um, overlay that will explain to you um, essentially that there was like seven or eight options in terms of the people who would be with you at the end and who would you know, help Lee um, accomplish his final goal. I thought that was really cool because it meant for me as a player, okay, I played it long ago, and of course I played it a second time to see how my choices could change the outcome. Um, but then I'm playing it again, and I kind of know what's going to happen, but I can really get that full experience. And yes, I did feel like uh, my recollection of the story did change comparative to um, the outcomes. So um, I, I think graphically this game holds up pretty well, and a big part of it is that... Um, you know, the art style is very comic booky, and it's got um, some like cell shaded style, and especially when you play that graphic black, it really does look like something out of a comic book. And um, even then, the 3D models and textures, they all hold up and they look really good. Uh, I can't really say much on the sound in the music department. Of course, I talked about voice acting. Voice acting, super effective and good, um, but nothing musically stood out here. Um, and the gameplay is very minimal. You will walk around an environment and take a little ridicule and kind of point it over items and interact with them, so to speak. Um, you will do QTE events, um, which are super easy and you're never gonna fail. Sometimes you have moments where you have to make a decision quickly and choose like left or right or so on. And this game um, for those does generally slow down and allow you to make those decisions and so um, I, in the gameplay department, it's a very straightforward game. It's really easy to just turn on the run, the walk fast button and just speed through the whole thing. <laughs> um, but that's about it. I would say if I was to kind of give a rank, um, I'll, I'll save the rankings for the end. But anyways, much enjoyed. Okay, moving on to season two. So season two, when I first played it and it released, I was very frustrated with Telltale because I had the first game on PlayStation 3 and the second game on PlayStation 4. And the unfortunate part about the original release was that you couldn't import your save cross consoles. Um, I don't know why Telltale didn't think that this would be something players would want or would need, um, but it was frustrating because when you start up season two, if you don't have an imported save, the game just randomly generates decisions and choices out of season one. And some of these can be big and can affect the outcome of the story as you experience it. Um, and I'll start by saying that the narrative here is a little more, <laughs> it's funny, the first season of The Walking Dead, the television series, had this issue going into the second season too, where it becomes a lot more um, focused and it's less, um, it's less adventurous, I'd say, in terms of the overall scope. The characters in this um, version all have very drastic um, kind of um, biases and, and things that they, uh, goals, goals I'd say, as a group, and a very large group at that. And I ultimately didn't end up caring so much for many of the characters. I thought that in this, in this one you play as Clementine, and um, they still try to give you that illusion of choice. It's not very effective here. I think that this game is very on rails. And when I realized that, I started to think and play more like a cynic than ever before. Um, but the game's very on rails. You're a kid, and so all these ad adults are just listening, but then making their own decisions as they go. And I didn't really end up caring for most of them. I mean, the main guy who's helping you in the final escape of the game um, screws up the whole situation because he's hungry. He wanted a cheese sandwich. He wanted a cheese sandwich, and he ruined the whole the whole operation to kind of set everyone free. And uh, every character was kind of like that and uh, you know, selfish and so on in my opinion. And so I had a lot of fun just being like um, emo, evil Clementine and, and, and yeah, I enjoyed that. Now the big arc for me is just the development of Clementine and her life and season two does do that quite effectively. And so I did enjoy her story and I enjoyed being there for her story. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Gameplay doesn't really change in this one. They change some things, like very little, such as how you interact with objects. Um, and some of those decisions I was talking about in the first game where it kind of slows down 
and you get a moment to really think about what you want to do. A lot of them are more real time here, and so you really have to just think on the fly, and be like, okay, I, I'm gonna do this thing, and I'm gonna go save this person instead of that person. Or there's a fantastic one towards the end where Clementine has to make the decision. She has this ax, and there's a person who needs help, and there's one way to help them, but it's really gonna cause some pain and some trouble and some problems, no matter the decision you make. So um, I did really enjoy those factors. Again, musically, not so much happening here. Um, and as I mentioned, I thought that the game had a much more focused and condensed view of the world. You go from like a, a home in the forest to a ski lodge in the forest um, to a Walmart in the forest. And that's about everywhere you will go in this title. Okay, moving on. Um, season two, still kind of salty to this day about Telltale's decisions, but what are you gonna do? Okay, episode three. We're introduced to a new character, Javier, and his brother David. And Javier and David have a very interesting history and past between each other, even going back to before the zombie outbreak, essentially. Um, and David is, 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 something happens really bad to David, and Javi is left alone with David's wife and her, and, and David's children. And they're kind of surviving in the zombie apocalypse by themselves on a road trip and they they go and they stop somewhere and they cause some trouble with some locals and then a whole shabub kind of breaks out and then that's the next five episodes um i really liked javi i thought he was a really neat character i liked that again you had some of this more decision making capacity that i think the game allows since javi is kind of the leader of this family that he's in um overall super enjoyable from a uh, writing sense there's um, some pretty big, like, oh, crap, kind of moments in here that'll throw you off guard. And um, you also get an interaction with um, Clementine, which is pretty fun. And it's cool to see Clem kind of becoming an older person and also asking the question of if children grew up through the zombie apocalypse, what would those children be like? And I think Telltale did a pretty interesting um, job here of telling that story and developing those characters. And so it's fun to see that. I think the sad thing about these games though is that Clementine is really the anchor across all the seasons and she's the one that you um, get to, uh, you know, see do that. But otherwise, a lot of characters come and go and that happens here as well. While Javi's story is interesting and his brother's story is interesting, I think that unfortunately a lot of the characters in your group are hit and miss in terms of memorability and development. Um, my favorite is Jesus. You literally have Jesus along for this journey and he turns into quite the badass by the end. But otherwise, a lot of the characters become either forgettable or they're around for an episode or two and disappear. And I do wish that there's a little more continuity the hardest part being that um, they kind of reneg all of the decisions made up to the final point in season two with this season. And that kind of disappointed me um, a little bit. But a couple things I did like was graphically the game was enhanced. Um, the voice acting is pretty great. There's a couple characters. Um, there's a character, Eleanor, who I think some of their lines later in the season are eh, questionable. Um, but, you know, enjoyable nonetheless. I had a lot of fun with this one as well. Okay, episode four is really fantastic. And I'm trying to be very vague because I don't want to ruin too much of it in case you've not experienced these games. The writing is really good. The characters are um, super engaging as a viewer and as an enjoyer of the game. Um, the music, and actually this for episode three, they kind of introduced some theme songs which will play at the start of each episode. And I thought it was fantastic and it sets a wonderful tone and it really makes you feel like you're playing a, a TV show, almost. Um, so those are great. And the, gra and the graphics, they've kind of redone a lot of the frameworks for the visuals in these games. Um, the gameplay is a little more engaging, especially in episode four, it's almost like you're playing a third person 
um, style action game, just you know, a little less action, a little more QTEs. Um, but the writing's really good. And it's interesting now, you know, you play as Clementine and Clementine is helping another child kind of survive in this world and take care of them. And so in the first game, you're Lee and you're making decisions for this group and they're really affecting everything. In the second, you're a child and nobody's listening to you and just making their own decisions anyway. In the third, you're kind of back to this position that Lee was in, taking care of a family um, in the middle of this apocalyptic world. And then four, now you're still making decisions as Clem and ultimately very important decisions because the kid that you're with, they're developing and understanding the world based on the things you do. And I thought that was a really interesting um, way that they set up the character development. And again, we get back to episode four, feeling like there are some consequential decisions that you're making. And again, everything from episode three, unfortunately just kind of disappears and goes to the wayside. And so again, I wasn't a big fan of that, but I did really enjoy what they did in episode four. And it was sad because I think between the second and third episode, uh, second and third episode in here, and sorry, I'm, I'm mixing up my language between episodes and seasons or series. But in season four, episode two and three, Telltale filed for bankruptcy, and that's when Skybound picked it up. Um, and they put a little bow on it, and it was nice, and it was a good conclusion. And actually, kind of subverted my expectations with the ending that at least I got. And so I really did enjoy um, that. So overall, uh, oh, before we move on to the overalls, Michonne. Um, neat season, very short, non-consequential, has nothing to do with the other four. Um, I, I'm actually not too sure why it exists. But it was nice to play, ultimately, and at this point in the game, if you've done all four series, you will probably do Michonne's as well. Otherwise, um, it could just be skippable and, and pretty forgettable. Um, but I did have fun with Michonne just kind of being a violent, crazy psychopath. So that was cool. <laughs> and actually, I, you know what? I'll take that back. Michonne's season has some of the most interesting um, villains um, that show up across all of these games. So just another thing to think about. Okay, overall, Telltale. I'm a big fan of Telltale games. I like the adventure style. I like just walking around and point and click. Um, it's funny because a lot of these games got ragged on for their lack of you know, gameplay overall but this is so what a lot of 90s uh, PC gaming was like all these point and click adventure titles and I think ultimately Telltale not only set the bar for what that looked like in the modern age but they created something really engaging and interesting and fun and I think if you are like me you'll probably get through five seasons of this and say okay that's enough zombies for me for a little while <laughs> um, but the adventure is totally worth it and especially to see an experience Clementine's growth and development as a child to a young woman is incredible and very fun. Though the games can be janky sometimes, and though I experienced for some reason a lot of visual glitches um, and some audio ones. In the fourth season, there's a piano scene, but then later the piano might just keep playing um, into subsequent scenes and at a super loud volume, like to where you can't even hear the dialogue and at first I was thinking to myself wow that kid is really hammering away on that piano um, and he's just smacking it down but it turned out it was an audio glitch which I thought was funny and throughout the game throughout the titles you'll see like visual glitches like flickering textures or sometimes dust like falling off of things will be like a blood red and so sometimes I thought oh my god did someone get crushed by that ladder I put down on the floor <laughs> Um, you know, so on. But overall, I had a lot of fun. I think they're worth checking out. And if you've played maybe episode one or two or never at all, uh, pick it up. I think it's definitely worth it. And so overall, I wanted to ask, have you played the Walking Dead Telltale series? And if you did, what did you think about it? I hope you liked the video. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe. We'd love to have you around for the next one. And until then, hope you're well. And, uh, See you soon.